G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we're going to take what I think is our first look at the 2024 draft this entire year. I think I did a little preview at the end of last year and uh, you know things have changed as you'd expect, as you'd kind of hope over a six month period or whatever it's been. So today I'm going to have a little crack at plotting a top 20, bearing in mind we are so far out that a mock draft doesn't really serve so much in terms of actually trying to be predictive. It's more about getting some names out there, trying to uh, brainstorm different scenarios that could happen. You know, this far out from the end of the season, Obviously, we don't even know who's going to hold picks one, two, and three. Then, of course, there's trading and free agency to consider. There's teams with so many picks in the top 20. They can condense those, switch them with clubs that have academy players, etc. Uh, but to give you, I guess, a brief profile of the top 20. In contrast to last year, there probably is a clear favorite at the moment to be number one, but the gap isn't so large. Certainly not in comparison to last year with Harley Reid, who was the clear number one choice. In my opinion, there's probably two standout candidates right at the top of the tree. There was so much to play out. You, you imagine that could change, particularly as talls throughout the back end of the season start to emerge. And that's one observation I've made through following the draft for so long. You know, you start to see talls start to bolt towards the end of the year. They start to A, fill out, in some cases probably still growing. And then there's the athletic testing, which is all going to have a big impact, particularly in assessing the talls, in my opinion. But you've probably got two clear standouts. Um, you know, this draft has always been profiled as being pretty compromised, 2024 and 2025. If you thought 2023 wasn't bad. Having said that though I've plotted out my top 20 I have one academy player to the Gold Coast Suns and I have two father sons to other clubs so it's not too compromised yet but obviously things can change dramatically having really mapped out this exercise for the first time and, and plotting names and trying to come up with a bit of a ranking and, and assign them to different clubs one thing that I sort of noticed was that I had a previous assumption that this draft wasn't particularly good for talls, particularly at the top end, it is mostly midfielders. And then that's sort of changed over the last couple of months. I've got a key position player in my top four picks. And then particularly towards the middle and late round, I've started to see there are, there are a number of quality talls. So there's the Whitlock twins, Harry O'Farrell, we'll get into all of that exactly. But my previous assumption that this would be a midfielders draft has been challenged and that could change further, like I said, over the course of the season as players develop further. So with that all being said, it's probably enough preamble for now. Let's have a crack at a top 20. This video is brought to you proudly in a paid partnership with BetterHelp, which is a platform that matches you with a credentialed therapist who is trained to listen and give helpful, unbiased advice. Now, the idea of starting therapy may be a little bit daunting. There are some people who maybe are a little bit uncomfortable with the face-to-face -face interaction. And in some cases as well, you might not feel like you're gonna be matched with the right therapist for you because they might not live in your area. But that's the great thing about BetterHelp because you can set up your therapy sessions either through phone call, video chat, or if you prefer text messaging, whatever's the most comfortable for you, it's super convenient. To get started in the process, all you have to do is click either the link in the description or you go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. It takes you to a questionnaire and you fill that out so that they can assess your specific needs. In most cases, they will then match you with a therapist within 48 hours. You can then book your therapy sessions at a time that is convenient for you. And if you find that you're matched with someone that isn't quite the right fit, you do have the ability to switch to a different one at no additional cost. So if you think BetterHelp might be the right fit for you, like I said, you go to the link in the description or you can go to BetterHelp com forward slash true footy. Now clicking that link does support the channel, but also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp so you can be matched with a therapist who can listen and help. So I'm going off the ladder order that is correct prior to round 14. I'm not sure exactly what day this video will come out, but this is based on the ladder as it currently stands as I record this. So North Melbourne hold pick one naturally. And I'd imagine they go with Josh Smiley. Now, I always thought this guy's name was Smilly before I actually heard it out loud. It is Smiley, I believe, and quite a unique prospect, very unique prospect. He's 194 centimeters at the time he was last measured and a genuine big bodied dynamic midfielder, really powerful contested and stoppage player. Doesn't really demonstrate an aerial game yet, but you know, his production's there. And I don't think he was the clear number one last time I did a draft preview, but he's certainly the number one rank at the moment. And North Melbourne have a decision there. I still think they probably need tools, but at least Smiley there does offer something different to what they currently have. He's 194 centimeters. I think he was 194 centimeters at the end of last year, which leads me to believe he could be closer to two meters by the end of the season. So that'd be kind of fascinating. As it currently stands, Richmond have pick two and they take the other top line midfielder, at least in my opinion, in this draft in Finn O'Sullivan, who's 182 centimeters, very damaging style midfielder. And I think 
where Richmond's at in their rebuild. I think they could use some midfield top-end talent, absolutely. And I think they do kind of have a bit of a blank canvas as to what they can recruit or should recruit. They have a number of later picks that they can trade with clubs that need points for academy players. So I wouldn't be surprised if Richmond get multiple bites in the first round. But for now, with pick two, I think they take the other clear best player in Finn O'Sullivan. So West Coast currently have pick three. This is where I'll probably bid on Levi Ashcroft. Younger brother of Will, naturally. Um, you know, he could be around pick three. He could be a little bit higher. You know, looking at the trends with father-son picks who are rated that highly, they don't tend to go pick one, usually. I mean, Jamara did. I know he's an academy player, but Day cost slid a little bit. Ashcroft himself went pick two. It doesn't really matter. Levi Ashcroft is going to join his brother at the Brisbane Lions. Similar sort of high work rate, high production style midfielder. So West Coast entered the draft at pick four, and they have a decision to make do they go midfielder or tall i'm going to go tall here and pick the first key position player in luke trainer who's 194 centimeters a decent one-on-one -on -one player as far as i can tell a bit more of a damaging intercept player who accumulates the footy and i think with jeremy mcgovern towards the end of his career a key position back does make sense for west coast i considered trainer for west coast i also considered sid draper who goes next to the Adelaide Crows at 182 centimetres and a player that has been reportedly on the radar of Adelaide in particular. And, you know, probably at the start of the season, I wouldn't have imagined Adelaide forecasted having a pick high enough to get Sid Draper. But I think he makes sense for them. I don't think he's, you know, he's not a particularly tall midfielder, but when you look at um, Adelaide's midfield in the one pace suggestion, we do have an endurance athlete with some speed and who can push forward and kick goals as well. Really well performed last year as a bottom major as well, and I think this is probably best available. I'm a big fan of Sid Draper. And like I said, probably does add something different to what the Crows already have. So then I have St. Kilda bidding on Leonardo Lombard. Again, this is another player who is going to the Gold Coast Suns where he actually gets bid on. I'm not too sure, but I think this is probably the top end of his range, but he's a very damaging, hardworking midfielder forward. You know, not dissimilar to Jake Rogers last year. On the smaller side, but at 16 years old, played in the VFL Grand Final last year and was a premiership player. So another beauty there for the Gold Coast Suns and that will absorb their first pick. Same thing with the Brisbane Lions who currently hold a decent pick. I've just absorbed that with Levi Ashcroft. Then we got St. Kilda and uh, we probably Jagger Smith is one you might expect to go a little bit earlier. In my opinion, I'm a wait and see on Jagger. This is kind of just my opinion. He's very high production, very tidy player, probably lacks a little bit of that hurt factor, which is why I could see him sliding a little bit to pick seven, but I think he had 50% game the other day. He finds the ball with ease. I think it's just a lack of hurt factor which makes me think he might not go in the top five, but you know, I could be completely wrong on that. So then we got Hawthorne, you know, I think they're in a position to go tall. This is where there's a bunch of talls available. I think they've recruited fairly heavily for their midfield um, over the last few years with guys like Ward and McKenzie. I think they're in a position to go tall and I'm going to take a Jack Whitlock. He's one of uh, two twins, 200 centimeters, key position forward, rising up the ranks. Could see him going a little bit higher. Um, you know, I don't think Hawthorne have a pressing need for a key forward or anything. I think this is the best available call and, you know, probably about eight years younger than Mitch Lewis. So I don't think it's a, a bad decision from a needs point of view at all. I think this would be a good fit for Hawthorne. So Melbourne currently have the next pick and they'll take a key defender in Harry O'Farrell. When you consider a bit of an aging list in transition, they've recruited a couple of key forwards over the last few years, Van Royen, um, Jefferson, and last year they you know went small with those picks. They went with Windsor. They went with Colton Tholstrup. Is there doubt over Harrison Petty staying at the club? I mean, he's being trialed forward at the moment. Stephen May, Jake Lever towards the end of the career. I think Melbourne are in a position to go tall and I think Harry O'Farrell, even if his, this is a little bit early for him, I think it makes sense for the Demons. So the Gold Coast Suns now have the Western Bulldogs pick and they'll take Sam Layla here. Tricky one with the Gold Coast Suns. You know, they took four first round picks last year. Um, other than Rogers, none of them bona fide midfielders. Will Graham, I suppose, is a de defender midfielder. But either way, I think Layla adds something as a big body midfielder or relatively large midfielder in this draft pool at 187 centimeters and also has some forward utility, uh, aerial threat going forward. I think he at least adds something different to what the Gold Coast Suns have. GWS then pounce on Christian Moraes, uh, another very outside classy midfielder, probably needs to work on his contested game, but probably another slightly different player to you know what GWS have in their young midfield there. In recent years, they've taken Callahan, they've taken Rouston. Last year, went a small forwarder and a halfback flanker. I considered a tall here in Job Shanahan, but they did just pick up Cadman a couple of years ago, and Riccardi is not exactly on the older side. So it wouldn't surprise me if GWS go tall in this draft, but Christian Moraes is probably thereabouts on best available talent. Now, Fremantle entered the draft here, and as it currently stands, and I probably expect this to change, but they have three first round picks, including the next two picks, if I'm not mistaken, if I've done this correctly. And with those three picks, 
I don't think they need a key forward, but they're probably in a position to take at least one tall. So I'll go with Job Shanahan here, who's 194 centimeters, probably still going to grow. Good aerial player. They've got Josh Tracy, they've got Jai Amos, and they've got Luke Jackson probably as their keys for the next, God knows, 10 years. Nothing set in stone. You know, one of those players could fall off, but I'd probably just lean towards taking a tall here when you've got three first round selections. I don't think it's a silly move in that sense. And they do have a lot of key backs as well. So then with the next pick, I've got Joe Berry, a really hardworking, very pressure oriented small forward. Kicks goals. I think the last time I looked at his stats, he was averaging about three goals a game. So he's impactful and he's a dynamic pressure style player. And you know, they just lost Lockie Schulz. I know they recruited Deline, but I think he's quite different to Deline in that sense. So Joe Berry from Victoria joins Fremantle. Then I've got a couple of bids that I'll just throughout here. So I've got Carlton's Ben Camprioli, a high production wingman sort of style player, plays a little bit off halfback as a distributor from South Australia. Carlton matched the bid here from Geelong and snap up one of two Camprioli's. Then for the sake of it, I am going to bid on Adelaide's Tyler Welsh. So Adelaide will get a second first rounder here. Tyler Welsh is the son of Scott. Currently listed as 191 centimeters, which I don't know if, if that is accurate. He doesn't look 191 centimeters. And regardless, he's probably going to grow a little bit anyway by the time the draft actually happens. But he's been kicking goals this year, I think, recently. He had a bag of eight or something like that. Kicked three goals in an early champs game. And this one's locked and loaded. Camprioli will join Carlton probably in the first round. Same thing with Tyler Welsh. And that adds to Sid Draper. So not a bad haul here for the Adelaide Trows. Now we got Geelong. Okay, now my personal guess is that this pick probably ends up at the Bulldogs in some way, shape, or form for Bailey Smith. But let's let's assume that Geelong hold this pick currently. Now, what do they go with? I mean, aging list, you know, they've recruited a lot of young players over the last couple of years. They're top and bottom heavy, a little like West Coast actually, and have a lot of veterans, but have a lot of under 22s and 21s. And Last year, took two tall players. They took Connor O'Sullivan, they took Mitch Edwards, and you know a bunch of other players as well. Could they add to their midfield? I think with the the glut of talls here, I think I'd, I'd see the temptation for Geelong to go tall again. Now down back, they have O'Sullivan, they have De Koning. They might take Matt Whitlock. Matt Whitlock is the twin of Jack, who got drafted by Hawthorne. I was just double checking. And Matt was probably more of a key defender who swung forward in recent times and can play forward. So I'd imagine if hypothetically in this scenario, if Geelong see Matt Whitlock, like him as a forward, I think that makes sense for their list needs. Would they pull the trigger on him if they pigeonhole him as a key defender? I don't know if the need is the same, but I like that pick for Geelong to at least go tall, assuming they hold this pick. Now, Fremantle have their third selection. They've taken Job Shanahan, they've taken Joe Berry, so a key forward and a small forward. And now I'll go with Taj Hotton and technically another forward half player. I think he's a forward that has converted into more of a hard running midfielder, quite dynamic. And I reckon given his ACL, he could slide a little bit here, but with three picks, Fremantle have the luxury of maybe taking a punt on someone like Taj Hotton. One of the more interesting prospects in this year's draft as well that I'll be keeping an eye on, well, at least in terms of his ranking, he's done an ACL, but I think I think there's a lot of potential here with Hotton, and I think he's too good to pass up here for Fremantle. Essendon entered the draft at pick 18, and last year they took Nate Caddy, and then they took a couple of running defenders in Lual, and they took Archie Roberts. So they could go for a big bodied midfielder or something like that. That's something that's been linked to Essendon over a number of years now. They did recruit Ben Mackay last year, but are they in a position to maybe take the punt on another tall? You know, looking at the best available, I don't know necessarily if there is like a big bodied inside midfielder that, that suits them at this range. So I might I might take the punt on Noel Moraz. Another high production key position defender, I think he's 198 centimeters and has done some stints in the ruck. I know they got Zach Reed. I know they got Ben Mackay and another fella that they recruited a couple of years ago that is escaping me, something in the 40s, another key defender type. Red hair, let me know in the comments, I'm forgetting. I know they've recruited for this, but I do think they're in a position where they can probably take a punt on a first round key position talent with the doubts around the players that they do have. Alternatively, I'd imagine, you know, big bodied midfielder, perhaps. Certainly don't need a key forward or a halfback flanker, that's for sure. So then to finish off, we have Sydney with two back-to-back -back selections. And Sydney's always a hard team to forecast who they're going to select. It sometimes belies logic. And I don't mean to sound like arrogant when I say that. I just mean sometimes you get a feel for, you know, what teams are going to do based on their list needs. And I found Sydney historically have been a team that will just pick plays you don't expect. So with that in mind, I think I'll just go best available here for the Swans. And I think Isaac Kako or Keiko, I've heard both pronunciations, probably has bolted into top 20 selections. He's a smaller forward midfielder, a little bit different to Barry. Barry's a little bit more defensively oriented. Kako's a little bit more of a electric style playmaker. And he's, he's pushed up into the midfield in recent times and starting to get, you know, 24, 29 possessions, I think, in a game. I could have that slightly wrong. But he's improved his production. And I think Sydney would like a dynamic small forward, you know, especially 
especially considering where they are in the window. Could Kako play early? I think it's possible. With their next selection, I've got Bo Allen here from Western Australia. The only Western Australian that I've picked in my top 20s, 191 centimeters and sort of, you know, probably more of a halfback flanker at times. He's definitely played some time in the midfield and I think he's been trialed up forward as well and known in particular for his pace and he can win plenty of the footy. So this one will be an assessment over what position actually Bo Allen will be. Do the Swans need another running defender? I'm, I'm not too sure. They probably don't even need a pure midfielder as such. I think they've drafted for that. You know, they've got a, almost an oversupply at the moment. And Caden Cleary was also taken through their academy last year. But Bo Allen does add a point of difference. Probably is a bit more of an outside speedy player as well. So there's versatility there, but I think that's at least Bo Allen's range. So I'll lock that one in for now. But anyway, guys, that is my take on the top 20. Just a crack. I'll probably do one of these a month until we get a little bit more serious about the draft. It's, uh, it's good to get some names out there. Doing this has probably familiarized me a little bit better than I previously was as well. But let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know who you want your team to draft. If you're an Eagles fan, I do have an Eagles fan channel. And I'll probably do an Eagles focus video on this topic very soon. That's called True Eagle if you're unaware. But for now, thank you for being here and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.